So hi, my name is Vince Burke. I'm the chief architect for security and I run a number of innovation um, uh, efforts within Riverbed. Uh, generally at events like this I talk about what's up and coming and things that we're working on and what's in the pipe. But today we're going to um, talk specifically about what's on the truck um, with regards to network performance management. Um, what we've seen so far has been um, you know, network routing, it's been um, uh, network acceleration, it's been SaaS acceleration, um, and just a number of different topics around uh, making the network work, figuring out why, um, you know, how to make it work better, uh, and getting the packets to the people. Um, what I'm going to talk about is when it doesn't work, how do you figure out uh, why that is? Um, and then we'll do a little demo. So, I figure you guys would appreciate the demo better than um, the slide where. So I'm going to go through these slides. We're going to dive right into the, uh, some of the products. Um, one of the problems that I have with NPM is that we have so many different products or solutions or parts of our solution that I can't really go into all the details of all the parts of it. So I'm going to try to touch on uh, three products, but talk about some of the others as well. Um, the way it's traditionally been done at Riverbed is that we've broken these things down by the data source that collects the data to get you sort of best of breed kind of analysis. And then we have one overarching dashboarding tool with which you can get all this data in a single pane of glass. Um, common problems um, that we're all familiar with when the network doesn't work or the application doesn't respond, where does the res uh, responsibility lie for fixing that? How quickly can we figure that out is the key to getting everybody back up and running. Um, for us, this is where I'm starting to introduce some of the product names. Um, this is just a graph from Gardner, um, the network performance maturity slope for what, uh, whatever it's worth. The point being is, as we start here at the bottom, it is very simple. Is the network up or down, right? This is the ping that we talked about. Moving up, we're looking at SNMP style tools, API driven tools, where we get some uh, self reported performance data and try to display that. Um, we have a tool called NetIM for that. Um, it's the one that I won't be showing today, but I'll have some screenshots for you. Moving up, you get flow based technologies, S flow, NetFlow, IP fix, what have you, which are actually very, very powerful um, for a variety of tasks. I think it's a, um, a heavily underused. Um, uh, data source. Our tool for that is NetProfiler. I will be showing you guys that extensively today. And then at the top um, of the maturity curve is the packet-based technologies um, uh, for which we have a tool called AppResponse. Now, naturally, of course, an SNMP-based tool can gather data from whatever wants to speak SNMP. Whereas when you move to flow, you're already starting to look at you know, routers, switches, firewalls, and devices that can report that stuff. And then when it comes to packets, right, so your, your coverage can still be pretty broad, but when it comes to um, uh, packets, you have to start making a selection on where you're going to grab those things because it can get pretty expensive. Now, um, here's a little architecture overview of that, um, just to introduce the names again. Um, we, there's additional names in here of tools I won't even be talking about that become very case specific um, uh, when it comes to, for instance, configuration management. But when we look at um, SNMP flows and packets, uh, those tools essentially give us a fairly wide cover on monitoring what happens in the network as well as the cloud. Um, uh, and at the head of that, so all these things have their own user interfaces. At the head of that, we have a tool called Portal, which is actually our portal into the various um, uh, data source specific tools. Um, and it's a generic uh, dashboarding tool for Riverbed style um, data. There is some third party data integration there, uh, but I'll, um, I'll, uh, that is not the primary focus. Okay, probably my most favorite of um, the entire presentation, diversifying visibility. Right? Now, this is typically something I do when I talk about our security posture or our, uh, the security value of our technology. But what you have here is a picture of my dog. Um, this is a regular photograph. Uh, this is, um, uh, I think this was the MRI, which is pricey. Um, and then there is an x-ray. By taking different views, different technological views of the same sort of 
object, right, the same environment, um, I can do my diagnosis better, faster, more accurately uh, than when I look at a single data source alone. Right? So this is the philosophy. I did it also with the Tetris blocks, right? So the top view and the front view and the side view of these different objects is exactly the same. But it gets you um, sort of why it is important and why we see a lot of our customers um, racing up that adoption curve for that kind of technology. So let's dive right in. Net IM. Yeah, yeah, I got a couple more like that. Um, <laughs> That's a long flight here. Um, so NetIM uh, is our tool for uh, SNMP. We've got the, the, um, the Windows um, interface. You know, we can also grab configurations um, off devices. Uh, and it is more of a generic tool for finding out what the health of my network is. So essentially, it is a continuous um, uh, view of um, uh, what is happening and what devices aren't working, much like what you are familiar with uh, from SNMP tools um, in general. Now, we also can compare um, performance problems to device configuration changes uh, for some select numbers of devices. So if a misconfiguration causes uh, outages or performance issues, that can be um, correlated together. Um, we also do analysis of the network application path with, these, uh, with this tool, meaning um, finding performance problems if any particular part of um, uh, the chain, right, from, for instance, server to load balancer to database to network path, uh, what have you, um, uh, may not be optimally performing, uh, we can do that analysis uh, for you. At all. So we, we actually create a map of that so you get some kind of idea of how your packets are flowing and where the problems may lie. Um, and then finally, we have a, a generic um, way of bringing in uh, third-party metrics. This is kind of, um, you know, as we start seeing a move to the cloud, there's a lot of interfaces that are being offered for monitoring how cloud hosts are doing, how parts of the cloud network are doing, et cetera. Mm. So this is a way for us to bring some of that uh, data in. However, so what I, I have an example of uh, something a customer um, built here, which is um, a number of custom metrics on a, on a Microsoft email server. Um, we have seen customers go as far as hooking this stuff up um, to their uh, Salesforce pipelines to figuring out which orders are closing, comparing that to their network performance and what have you. So it can actually be used in a very generic way. Um, Here's a picture of what that looks like when you start sticking that in our portal dashboarding tool, but we're going to dive into that in, um, uh, in a minute. So let's climb to sort of the middle level. <laughs> I trust I worked on that one. Um, <laughs> um, it's a bit of a stretch. Sorry. Yeah, oh, gosh. Uh, the, the problem is you have to be careful at the analogies. Hang on, there's more. <laughs> Um, oh. uh, as, as we go through this. So we're going to have to dive deep and uh, yeah, yeah, et cetera. Uh. So NetProfiler is our flow tool. Um, specifically, so one thing that I, I want to point out at this, uh, at this stage, and which we'll see in the demo as well, is, is one thing we, um, uh, we value very much is what I call full fidelity data collection. So instead of just creating a graph of all these flow records and then storing the graph to disk, what we do is we store the flow records to disk, and we can generate the graph afterwards in any configuration that you want. Now, this also gives us very powerful forensic recall, which is something we see happen often when people have security incidents. Can you help us get to the data? Who connected to whom, when, how long ago, um, and who else is acting like that on my network as well? So that's a powerful um, bonus, if you will, that we gather uh, from that. Um, obviously, NetFlow, SFlow, IPFix, um, JFlow, you know, whatever flow, it all either looks like NetFlow or SFlow um, in the end when you uh, pluck it apart, except for VPC flow logs, which is what you get from Amazon. They don't look like anything and they're very painful, but we do ingest them because it's become um, the number one requested or uh, most frequently used feature. Um, Lots of things you can do with a tool like NetProfiler. Um, traditionally built as a network behavioral anomaly detector tool. Um, basically, uh, baselining technology, thresholding technology, and finding things that are out of the ordinary. So there's actually some very powerful security capabilities with that as well, but also uh, 
common anomaly detection for the performance of um, the applications on your network. Um, you can do simple things with it as well, simple bandwidth analysis, um, what have you. One thing that we do with NetProfiler really well is we, we call this deduplicating the flow, but what it essentially is, is if you are reporting in flow data from many different routers and switches, um, we find out if the same flow is taking a particular path through your network and store this exporter data with the flow, so we can create entire paths of how uh, packets are moving through your network, and then we can store response times and we can store issues with that. What you're missing here is a little bit of red coloring when an anomaly detector uh, shows that we went out of range. Um, but by mapping out um, the application path, we're able to indicate similarly as we did with NetIM, but now in the flow data uh, where the application's performance may be breaking down. And we're doing this with VPC flow logs as well. Trust me on that. Um, I have a question while you're showing some screenshots that show uh, performance through many hops throughout the network. Does that mean we have to have many listeners throughout the network? So uh, NetFlow, so yes, um, uh, if you were to do this with packets, you're correct. You would have to uh, tap each of them. Uh, NetFlow, it simply comes from the routers and the switches in the way. So most of those devices are able to report that stuff sort of natively. Right, so NetFlow is, um, and NetFlow is like the phone bill for your, for your network, right? It's just IP address A, talk to IP address B on these ports from then to then, and this many bytes were communicated, but we don't know what was in those bytes, right? So, so when you're collecting NetFlow from a bunch of these um, sources, uh, how do you arrange them in line to be able to build that model of the network? Otherwise, they're just... That's the secret sauce. No, there's um, no. There, you 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 ask that's a very a question. Yeah, that's exactly no. Uh, yeah, there's a number of yeah. We use a number of technologies depending because not all flow data will report things like TTL. Uh, sometimes we have to use timing to do it. Um, in some cases, we're getting it from our own packet um, engine app response. So and then 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 we obviously have um, you know we, we see MAC addresses. We see even more data in there. So um, and sometimes we don't do a good job at it. I'll tell you that. Um, but um, uh, and we allow you to modify these maps. So if you you know you feel about how you feel about those. So um, so yeah. But that is um, yeah. That, it's a combination of different technologies that uh, we try to do that. It's been that well, secret sauce. <laughs> um, and finally, if you want to dive deep into packets, um, we have our app response appliance, which is um, a full line rate packet capture appliance that uh, primarily focuses on um, performance, uh, but there's a lot of other powerful capabilities in there. Um, and as uh, in, uh, in Riverbed's um, style is also a very good and powerful packet vault, which is why we see uh, increasingly more adoption also by cybersecurity teams. Um, obviously, coming from the various packet brokers, we also offer agents. Again, agents, but that's um, one way in which we're able to capture some packet streams um, in cloud-deployed uh, hosts. Like I said, AppResponse primarily tries to measure response times, um, and it is actually very good at that. It tries to do that through some amount of um, application analysis. It tries to do that uh, through protocol analysis. Um, uh, it tries to do that through understanding certain uh, wire protocols um, uh, specifically to try to understand where the slowdown is, if it's in the database query versus um, the web server versus the network, what have you. Um, I'll skip through this a little bit uh, faster. Um, uh, the point being is that um, the power of taking the packets, you know, we're doing some DP on it, but we can also do flow export. It's, I'll show this in the demo. The net profiler I'll be using is getting its uh, flow export from our um, uh, app response appliance that we'll be pivoting back into. Um, uh, and we have a whole slew of different types of protocol analysis that's offered on top of that um, so that you can um, um, uh, you know, do this analysis of where the slowdown or the um, uh, problems may lie. OK. Yeah, let's, well, what should we say? Slide down at the Megan's problem. Um, so this is when, I, when I'm going to sit down and try to do the demo um, uh, for you guys a little bit. So the, the story goes as follows. Um, Megan is frustrated, of course, um, because Megan is um, uh, running into performance problems on the network. She's had some of her calls get badly choppy, and it happened around 
12 o'clock today. Now, what I'm actually going to do is a demo of a scenario that I helped a customer with in real life. Um, obviously, this isn't their data, it is our data, um, but this is roughly how that investigation went down. Notes? Um, so Megan is frustrated. Um, we happen to know Megan is in Boston, so let's dive, um, let's dive in. Oh, there we go. Um, all right, so this is, uh, because I've got screenshots of the entire process as well, the demo will work, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're starting out with Steel Central Portal, which is our, um, which our dashboarding tool specifically designed um, to interact with each of our individual data sources. Um, this tool um, offers um, uh, uh, a capability of connecting essentially any of Riverbed's uh, telemetry collecting uh, tools right into here. Um, you, know, you can see there's these things we call cards. Um, they have key performance indicators which hide an entire dashboard behind it. Um, pretty much each of these you can dive into, you can customize and you can um, uh, take a look um, at a whole number of uh, 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 further broken down indicators and if you need to dive further you can dive um, into the individual uh, point tools. Now, um, and uh, so and if, you, know, you can take a look for instance at data sources that I've got connected just so that you uh, trust me to be true. It's probably not very easy to read. Um, I've got one app response and one net profiler collected. The app response is getting all the packets from the network, creating NetFlow out of it, sending it into NetProfiler, so both tools are essentially seeing the same thing, which is not always the case in most um, environments as customers deploy, you know, uh, where it makes sense. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look um, at my um, host group view. Uh, this is one that I have created. I'm looking presently at the last six hours, as Megan complained about noon. I'm on East Coast time. Um, you know, we can clearly see that there was a spike in traffic around that time period, although Boston, where Megan is located, is not the largest um, in terms of traffic volume in any of our offices. We have more offices. Um, it certainly seems um, that there, is, uh, there was an anomaly or a change uh, in the network around then. Um, the power of uh, Portal is, is that from here, I can dive into almost any of the, uh, the deeper reports. Um, so this is what I call a dashboard. Um, I have analytics. Where this is the tool where we're, we're doing most of our work with machine learning and AI as well in Portal because we're bringing that data together from all those data sources. Um, and depending on what data sources are feeding this dashboard, I have um, additional reports or correlation abilities that I can do. Instead of what I'm uh, simply going to do is I'm going to dive into Net Profiler from here and I'm going to take a look at that host group Boston um, that Megan is located in. So at this point it has logged me in uh, to that, my Net Profiler. You can see in the URL that the IP address changed and I'm looking um, at the tool that we use to analyze NetFlow data. Obviously we can see the spike of traffic. We see that it basically is so large that any of the other traffic on the link is barely seen. Um, scrolling down a little bit, um, I can see what this traffic breaks down into, you know, standard um, uh, sort of pie charts as you expect. It seems that the majority of this traffic was SSH, so it's probably an SCP. So let's scroll further down to the conversations and find out whom was conversing with whom? Where was this traffic going that caused the link to be congested? Um, I have an IP address, an internal IP address, um, all the way at the top. 90% of all traffic turns out. Um, uh, yeah, you can actually, if you want, you can, you can go as, as far as to zoom in here. We can get even more specific and rerun the report. Um, zoom in even further. It wasn't necessary because the spike was so big, but just so you get the uh, sort of concept of that. Um, scrolling down to the conversations, um, most of that traffic was SSH. It was probably an SCP. Um, you know, a large data movement from inside my network to outside my network. The IP address that it went to seems to be in the United States. I can probably um, drill into that IP address further, but what I'm going to do is figuring out what that host um, dot, um, uh, 191 was doing. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna start. There's a number of different things I can do. I can launch a vulnerability scan. I can, you know, there's a variety of, of tricks and techniques I have. But what I want is I simply want a host report, that IP address, what was it doing, what is it on my network. It's probably not Megan herself, it's probably another system. 
Um, this host report, uh, you know, as you expect, I ran it for six hours, um, shows there's not a lot going on on this specific system. However, um, if I take a look at my applications that this host is using, I see obviously SSH, which was the majority of the traffic. Then I've got UDP 53 identified as DNS. Then I've got NTP, and then I have another UDP 53 which is identify as UDP unknown. So that's odd. I have a UDP 53 that is DNS and then a UDP 53 that my app response appliance couldn't classify as a particular application. Let's drill deeper into that. I'm going to generate a traffic app um, with this port um, in that context, the context being the application that I'm talking about. And I'd like to know who was talking to whom on that port. So I'm gonna grab a host pairs with ports report. And there you have it. So this very particular application, UDP unknown, is showing a traffic pattern that is happening exactly two hours apart. There's one traffic spike and it's very, very little traffic. I don't like that. I don't know what it is, but I don't trust it. Um, at this point, I'm kind of worried that this might be a command and control channel. So what I want to know is I want to understand if this is affecting anyone else in the subnet. So I'm gonna to go to a slash 24. I can change that to Boston as well. It would accept that. Um, but because it is so little traffic, I would like to go to my full fidelity flow list. Just give me the flow records as well. Who was talking to whom um, and when did that happen? I can change my time frame, what have you. Let's run that. Now it goes into the database. It grabs the actual records, which is probably going to take a few seconds here. Um, there we go. And there's my problem, right? Not just did I have individual spikes, I have three of them, three hosts in my network that are all showing that exact same behavior roughly around the same time on UDP 53, but not DNS, right? So, um, you know, th this, um, uh, uh, this realization when we had it with the customer um, um, uh, was uh, quite troubling to them. Uh, because the IDS had not uh, gone off, right? This is not a recognized command and control channel um, that was known. I, I have the individual flow list here. These in the last six hours were those communications. Um, the number of bytes transmitted and received is actually extremely small. Um, so the very next thing I want to know is give me those packets. Now, I'm gonna let you wait for that. I've got two minutes and 30 seconds left here. I just want to show you a couple of additional integrations. We can go to app response, we can do web transaction analysis, we can do an application stream um, analysis, and we can get into the app response after we've logged in. Um, we can get into the app response and do further analysis on the flows that I was just looking at. Um, this is not supposed to be an app response demo. I just want to show it off to you. Um, you know, the, the filter is obviously carried forward. I can take the filter away um, and we can start to analyze the response times of the individual sessions um, uh, that I've selected based on, um, uh, based on the filter. So it's just, um, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of um, uh, uh, great uh, response time analysis that can be done there. So, Let's go back real quick to my net profiler. The one I'm going to do is I want to see the packets between these hosts. Um, now, as a proper river that person, I should be using Packet Analyzer Plus, but I'm simply going to pull a PCAP into a Wireshark because that's the tool we all know. It's asking me which capture job I want to do, which is the default capture job. Um, uh, that's basically capture all packets at all times. And I will choose to open that very quickly here with Wireshark open and okay and skip over right there um, and there you have it so um, uh, what I have here here's the actual packet stream um, domain name system because it is UDP 53 can expand that a little bit further um, but once we start looking into it um, the protocol parser is unable to parse this protocol all right let me switch back to a little bit of forensic analysis and what happened, um, what actually ended up happening there. Oh, I need to be all the way at the end here. Um, what turned out to be happening is, there we go. 
96 bytes went out, 96 bytes came back. Um, content seems to be scrambled, but wasn't setting off any IDS that we were aware of. Um, we weren't, you know, further analysis didn't actually show much. To, the client was much more interested in re-imaging these devices and being done with it, um, which, was, um, which was a bummer. Seems to be roughly every two hours on the hours, um, what have you. One thing I did notice is that the content from any unique IP to this command and control system was unique per host, but repeated every two hours for that host. All right, I'm five seconds over. That was all I had for you guys today. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs>